Joining us on the Mercedes-Benz Vans phone line right now is the rookie running back of uh, the New York Jets, my team, my team growing up, and seeing him with 197 yards from scrimmage, a rookie rushing record, uh, at, uh, pardon me, a rookie record for the New York Jets against the Miami Dolphins was quite something, put it that way. And joining us here for the first time on the Rich Eisen Show, hopefully first of many, is Brees Hall. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? I'm doing great, Brees. Do you have any yeah. idea how happy you've made people over this weekend? Do you have any idea how happy <laughs> uh, you made people? You know, it's been a blessing. I just hope I can continue to keep, you know, chipping away at it and just uh, keep trying to help this team win games. How did things click for you this week uh, in a way that um, I'm sure you were imagining and hoping for? How did that work? Uh, it really just started with a good week of practice and uh, just knowing that the coaches try to do everything they can to you know, put the ball in my hands and help me um, be in good spots to make plays. And uh, it also has to do a lot with my teammates, you know, them having that trust in me as a rookie and um, them wanting me to have the ball, Zach trusting me to have the ball and everything like that. And um, it's, it's just been a blessing so far. I'm sure. Uh, but has the game slowed for you in the first five weeks? Reese? Yeah, you know, those first those first two weeks were a little jittery. I had to kind of get used to the tempo of the game and everything like that. But as I've gotten more comfortable, I've gotten more reps and everything like that, and the game started to slow down, and I've kind of been able to control the tempo of the game and everything like that. So um, I, I've just been getting better every every week just thanks to my team and thanks to all the opportunities I've been getting. Well, I mean, the first two weeks um, uh, when you said things were, were speeded up and fast, can you give me an example of that in the way how it slowed? What do you think? Uh, yeah, just when I was getting the ball, you know, uh, I wasn't hitting the hole as fast as I wanted to. I was missing. Uh, holes here and there, everything like that. And I felt like the coaches kind of knew that. You know, they were like, all right, you're a rookie, but, you know, you got no excuse. And um, I kind of just prided myself on just playing better football. Uh, that's all it was. I got more reps and more opportunities, and the game just started to slow down naturally. What do you mean they said you don't have any excuses? What does that mean? What do you mean by uh, that? Just for, just for them and myself, just to have that expecta expectation to come in and just help the team win games, be an impact player and. I felt like with all the rookies we drafted, that's what the expectation for us is. We have no excuses. And I won't say we have no room for error, but we, you know, we hold ourselves to a different standard. Well, you could have after week two. I know, you know, you're just a rookie. You could have clapped back at your coaches and say, uh, coach, there was a huge ass elf on the field. What am I supposed to do? I mean, I've never seen that. You could have said that, but you didn't do that. Uh, no, no, nah, nah, just cause I pride myself in playing at a okay. high level of football all the time. And okay. that's how it was for me in college. You know, I was one of those impact yes. players, one of those X factors. And, um, now that I have a lot, a lot, a lot of help on this team now uh, with the Jets, you know, guys like Elijah Moore, Corey Davis, Garrett Wilson, Michael Carter, Zach Wilson, and my whole O line, um, it's just a big help from them. And um, now I'm just in, in a great position to make plays. Brees Hall, New York Jets running back, fresh off of 197 scrimmage yards in the win over the Miami Dolphins here on the Rich Eisen Show. Walk me through your draft. What was that like for you to sit through the first night? Um, not hear your name called, and then and then that Friday, what 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 about that experience, Brees? Walk me through that if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, you know it's bittersweet. Uh, kind of just expecting, you know, as a child, as it was a childhood dream for me to kind of just hear my name called in that first round mm -hmm. and everything like that. And I felt like, um, at first I was I was really frustrated. I was kind of mad, just down, and you know that the next day I knew I was going to be going pretty fast and. I got that call from the Jets, and it just uplifted my whole spirits. But it was just frustrating for me that day, that first day, just because I felt like there wasn't that many players better than me, and everything like that. So, um, but once the once the second day came, I was just um, glad to be a Jet. I was glad to be a part of this great draft class that we have, and I felt like we did have the best draft so far. So it's been fun. So I mean, Maurice Jones Drew, my colleague at the NFL uh, Network, he wore 32 because that was the number of teams that passed on him in the first round. <laughs> But he wore that's what he wore. So he kind of wore that chip on his shoulder his entire career. Jonathan Taylor, who is the de facto first overall fantasy pick and a lot of people's right. MVP picks for this year, he went in the second round, top of the second round as well. Do mm -hmm. you wear this on your shoulder as you go about your business every day now, Brees? Yeah, for sure. I definitely kept those receipts, um, especially over the draft processes. All those teams talking to me, telling me that they like me and everything like that. And um, just comparing myself to – uh, other players and seeing where I stood, I felt like um, I was definitely worthy of being a first round pick. But, you know, everything really worked out for the best. Like I said, God put me here. He made me a New York Jet for a reason. And right now I'm just trying to prove that, you know, uh, I was worthy of being picked where I was picked. And 
I'm just trying to get better every day and help the team win games. So, yeah. So what was it like when you got that call? Uh, on uh, and I could have I could have helped you out because everything I was hearing uh, right before I went on the air that Friday night in Vegas was the Jets were coming mm-hmm. to get Brees Hall. That's all I heard. <laughs> um, what What about you on that night? Yeah, yeah, uh, I definitely was hearing the same things, you know. But um, as far as the draft goes, you know, you never believe, you can never really believe anything until it happens. So once I saw that call and saw the area code and everything, I was like, man, I'm about to be a Jet. So it was it was crazy, you know, just getting that call from Joe D talking to Salah. And everybody, it was, you know, it was just a huge blessing. I was so happy, you know. You, it's really a shift of emotions because you go from being down in the dumps after day one to just, you know, kind of just having your world made day two. And um, just seeing, you know, guys like Garrett, Sauce, Jermaine, Michael Clemens, Jeremy Rucker, Max Mitchell, just mm-hmm. seeing that I was going to be a part of a drive class with those guys. It was just a huge blessing. And I knew that we would come in and kind of make an impact for this team to help this team win games. It's not just any draft class, Brees Hall. i got to be honest with you, uh, speaking on behalf of uh, the Jets fan base, so much placed in this draft class, last couple, obviously, uh, but this one in particular, because it's filled with kids like yourself. You don't mind me referring to you as such, even though you just played like a grown-ass man. I mean, like uh, <laughs> it's filled with folks like yourself that are not familiar with, with the feeling that I, as a 53-year-old man, having rooted for this franchise since I can remember, have been feeling about the same old Jets, and here we go again, and this is not what's expected of the Jets, is actually winning and coming into a place like, say, Lambeau Field this weekend and coming out with the win. How do you handle hearing that mentality from the fan base and people emotionally Uh scarred like myself, Brees Hall? Yeah, you know you you hear it, but you can't really pay too much attention. Um, our team prides ourselves on um, just getting, the, just always giving that extra 60%. So, Coach Sala always says, you know, no matter how hard you're going, you still got 60% more to give. And we come in every day with that expectation to hold each other accountable and get better. And um, we don't really, really listen to the outside noise. We only really care about what each other thinks and what we think about ourselves. So, um, every day, you know, we're chipping away at it. We're trying to change this thing. And I feel like we're trending in that way and making the Jets a winning franchise. Brees Hall here on the Rich Eisen Show. Did you hear what Jair Alexander uh, had to say from the Packers in London after no, listening to the Giants? I didn't. Yeah, he mentioned something along the lines of um, that he believes in the defense there, uh, but possibly if they lose to the Jets, if we lose next week, then I'll be worried, is what he said. What do you What do you make of comments like that, Brees Hall? What do you think of what um, you know that? what it, it, is, it is what it is. Obviously, he just believes in his team and everything like that. So mm-hmm. I feel like he shouldn't be saying that, you know, they, the judge should be beating them or whatever the case may be. I just feel like, you know, he's confident in his team and he's confident in what they uh, they will do. But just like he's confident, we're confident in our team and what we're going to do. So it's going to be a great game once we step on the field for sure. Okay, good answer, Brees Hall. Good answer. I'm giving you a clap for that one. That's well done. That's a very veteran answer right there. Who was your guy growing up? who you wanted to be like, who you emulated when you were dreaming of being that first rounder, Breeze? Uh, you know, I've had a couple of family members that have played in the NFL. And also uh, my stepdad had a brief stint in the NFL. You mm-hmm. know, uh, my cousins, Roger Craig, he played. You, everybody knows who he is, you know, so don't really got to introduce him. And then I have a cousin named Ken Keith that played for the Colts for a little while. And he also played in the CFL. And then my stepdad, Jeff Smith, was a running back uh, at Nebraska. And then for the Chiefs and the Buccaneers. So, just looking up to guys like that, um, having that example set for me at a young age, I kind of already knew what I wanted to do uh, growing up. I was really in love with basketball and football, so I knew I was going to uh, make my way playing one of those two sports. So uh, just to, for it to end up how it's been so far, it's been a blessing. So we shouldn't be surprised that a cousin of Roger Craig just set the rookie record for yards from scrimmage just in his fifth game. Is that what you're saying, Brees Hall? <laughs> no, I ain't going to say all that. You know, I'll do that. Takes a lot of hard work, but <laughs> what has he yeah, taught you? Sure. What has he taught you? What, what what conversations have you had with Roger Craig, Brees? Uh, he always is just upli- uplifting me and just um, trying to keep me positive. He always uh, takes me good luck, and he always tells me if I had have a good game, and he definitely makes sure make sure that I know that I can reach out to him whenever I need anything. So it's been a blessing just to know I have his support. Okay, all right. So you're a kid from Nebraska, right? That's where you were born. Correct, Brees? Uh, right. Born in Detroit, but grew born. up in Nebraska. Ah, born in Detroit, grew up in Nebraska, then went to Iowa yeah. State. Any mm-hmm. significance playing in Lambeau Field for you then this weekend, Brees? Um, I get to go against one of my Iowa State guys, Alan Lazard, so I'm excited for that for sure. Um, he, he, we've been talking about that during the summer, so it's going to be fun to see him. Okay.
And how large is your vertical leap? You mentioned basketball. How's how, how's your vertical leap doing, Brees? Uh, 40. So, you know, okay. in high school, I was one of those uh, guys who, you know, I was kind of missed it, kind of did everything. Uh, I could dunk it a little bit, shoot, get to the basket. So I have a little basketball history, too. Okay. I'm asking that just to see if you got the vertical to leap into the stands if you score in Lambeau Field and do one of those. <laughs> Brees, what do you think? Uh, no, they might, they might have to kick me out of there. I don't know if I could do all that. Yeah, you get rejected. <laughs> yeah, you can get Rudy Gobert out of there. I I, I agree. Uh, what about Sauce? Do you think Sauce might have that in mind? What do you, what do you think? Do you, would he have? Would he... Oh, yeah. Sauce is one of those guys. You know, he's so confident in what he does, and he's been proving it week in and week out, and he's just letting the guys know that, you know, he is who we say he is, and um, he works, you know, he works just as hard as anyone. It's been cool just to be around him and get that relationship with him and see how much of a hard worker he is. And that's been tra- translating to the football field as well. Okay. Can you tell Garrett Wilson something for me? Would you mind? Yeah, I got you. Okay. Tell him that his his dad said hello. Will you please do that? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell him that for sure. He was very upset with me last time we spoke. And I told him that I was his father. Uh, because Michigan yeah. <laughs> beat Ohio State. But just tell him, you know, Dad says hello, and we'll see him in November one more time. Would you mind doing that for me? <laughs> yeah, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm writing checks right now. Uh, but I'm feeling great. My football world is great, thanks to you and yeah. everybody else that was drafted in your class. And it just So my last question for you is, what do you tell a Jet fan base that is all filled with optimism? We don't know how to walk around and live life, to be very honest with you, like this, Brees. What would you tell us? Um, just to just to keep staying along with us, don't give up on us. And, okay. You know, there's gonna be there's gonna be good, there's gonna be bad, but you know, as long as the fans stay loyal and stay true to who we are and keep believing in us, then everything's gonna pay off for the best. All right, Brees. Thanks for the call. Congrats on that big performance. Look forward to more. And I'm not just saying that because of the obvious, but uh, <laughs> my youngest son and I have both have you uh, in our starting lineups for our fantasy teams. So you go and run forth and multiply. Would you please? <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you having me on for Anytime. sure. Anytime. Let's do this again. Brees Hall, everybody. Brees Hall of the New York Jets right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Do you think he's going to walk up to Garrett Wilson and said your dad says hello? Man, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I, not. I really Give hope so. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> he was just like, hey, Garrett. Why not? I, Garrett, Why? I was just on the phone with your pops. trouble now. <laughs> Why not? He said, this, Gary, there was just on the phone with your pops. He says hello. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to be like, Who's that, Rich Eisen? <laughs> I mean, oh, he's Oh, oh this I mean, mother sucker. Oh. Oh. Swatting the nest. <laughs> Who's oh. your daddy? Oh, baby.